When my parents came to see the boys in the band, all those years later, and I had been a stage carpenter and I drilled a hole in the set where the actors about to come on stage could look and see the sixth row center section where they, they were VIP house seats. And one night, and you could look out and see Jackie Kennedy or you could see Groucho Marx or whoever was there that night. Uh, one night I looked out and there were my parents. <laughs> I was like, oh boy, this is going to be a ride. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, I was married and living in the village and all that stuff. But, but uh, when, when uh, I, can I use some bad words here? Yep. <laughs> uh, when I, when, when I, I look, I was happened to be looking through the hole because we were like, let me see, you know. Uh, but I was looking through it, my, my parents, and uh, I think it was Emery on stage said, who do you have to fuck to get a drink around here? And, my, and I thought, this will be it, this is the test. And both my parents went, you know, they gave a little thing, my mother tightened her hold on her purse. <laughs> but they accepted it. They understood somehow, somehow. And afterwards, after the show, we were walking up toward Ninth Avenue to go get some food, and they were very, very quiet. And we walked for at least a block, and not a word. So finally, I stopped. I guess we stopped before we could cross the street, and I said, "What'd you think?" And my mother said, "Well, Larry, uh, it was very interesting, you know, <laughs> my." My mother always put a good spin on things. She was kind to people, except to me. No, 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 she was, she was my big champion. And I looked at my father, and he had his hat on, like always, and he had a thousand-yard stare on his face. And I, I said, Dad, what do you think? He didn't look at me. He said, I... I was 21, I had a job at this express company and I used to manhandle all the heavy freight off the cars and onto the wagons in the middle of the night, it was a night shift. and I was working by myself. And I had a friend who worked in a bank and he wore a suit and tie, white shirt and tie. And I used to think about him and wish that I could be in that bank or in some job where I could wear a tie and, a, and a be clean. And uh, he in, invited me to walk along the river on Sundays with him. In, in those days, you took a walk. That was your Sunday uh, entertainment. On the Arkansas River, it was weeds and snakes, but they, they had a nice walk and, uh, and every Sunday. And one Sunday, he said, he gave, he gave me a book of poems. And I went home and I read those poems. And I realized that fella must be a homosexual. And I said, so that was the end of the friendship? He said, oh, no. No, he was my best friend. And that was it. He was a man of few words. But the acceptance was what I learned. Life dealt me a little spin turn, and I took that part, which actually fit me like a well-worn cardigan. And all my life since, people have told me that they looked to Hank as the spiritual center of that group of people because he told the truth. And I thought, wow, that's, 
that has changed my life. It, I keep saying, and, and I don't know if it makes sense to people, when we opened that play, the closet door was opened, the ignition switch for gay liberation was a fact, because here were gay people finally able to see themselves and watch other people seeing them as they were and enjoying it and laughing. And I thought, this is social justice. This is why I came into this crazy profession that I do. This is what makes it meaningful. And before that time, I don't think I could have put those two words together, social justice. <laughs>